Hello, hello everybody, and oh, gross, look at that. That is a specimen container filled all the way to the brim of snails that I have removed just from this one tank. But snails, snails can be considered friend and foe. So, in this video I want to talk about some of the things that we like about snails and their benefits and then we can talk about how they become a hindrance obviously besides the ugliness of them of how they look when they completely infest the tank I'm a fan of snails I think snails are good but when they reach infestation level something must be done now remember this is just one tank my 75 gallon red shrimp tank Let's take a look at some more. Okay, so my main goal tonight, the first part of the video I shot was the previous night. That was Friday night, and now we're at Saturday night, and so the snail removal continue, continues. And while this may still look like there's a lot of snails in here, and there is, for sure, there's way, way less. And a lot of these left in here, this is all stirred up from my movings around. There's still a lot in here. I'm gonna show you how I got them out, how I get them out. And then is I've baited algae wafers to get them all gathered up but it's not while we're I'm showing you how to get them out there are certainly times shrimp are good now you think about it why are there so many shrimp in here or shrimp why are there so many snails in here I'm talking about snails why are there so many snails in here why because I put that much food in there look at all the little ones because I put that much food in there and sn our snails will only get to the population that they can get to by how much food is in there and their environment they're going to go breed as much as their environment will allow and that's because I'm trying to feed plecos I'm trying to breed shrimp I'm dumping in Lots and lots of food in these tanks. I'm doing lots of water changes. And you end up with too many snails. So how is that bad? Other than yuck. Yes, I did take out a bunch of snails in this tank. This tank is one of the worst ones because it's a super red pleco tank. Main purpose is breeding Plecos, so lots of algae wafers go into this tank. Same with my 75 gallon. And this batch right here, look at how gross this is. The only water in there is the water that was in the snails. <laughs> because I didn't put any water in there, I just started scooping them out and putting them in. But if you don't have any kind of snails, like snails are good, and a new shrimp tank like this, where you don't have lots and lots of stuff going on, and the snails are welcome because you put too much food in there, you're going to have an ammonia spike, and you're going to kill your little shrimpy friends. And so, the snails definitely definitely keep food from rotting and they make use of it and if they're really super happy and they have lots of to eat they're gonna make more and more and more in this artificial too good to be true environment of no famine just feast that's some hair algae dealings with in this I got a lot of 
snails out here. And something interesting is in these tanks, most of the tanks, it seems like the trumpet, Malaysian trumpet snails have taken over. Look at all the dead ram's horns. But, but then, like every trumpet snail you see, almost, is alive and well. It's interesting how that ends up being. Now this thing is horribly stirred up. Because I'm going to show you how I do that. But this batch, what I was starting to talk about earlier, this batch is what I got out of this tank. And this will be the first go around. I'll probably start doing this every weekend. You get them all piled up with algae wafers. And a lot of these tanks, I've saved the best for last, is the <laughs> my Skittles tank. Which the substrate is three inches deep of snail shells and live snails. But this tank is extremely bad with snails because when I go scooping out snails and, or I'm shrimp, when I'm getting shrimp out of all the tanks, I'm resetting and I throw them all in here. I end up catching a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of snails and empty snail shells in these tanks. And then I end up just dumping them all in here. So we got lots of snail, lots and lots and lots of snails, and I'm gonna show you how I corral them out on this one. So we talked about, for example, when I'm cycling a tank, when I set up a new tank, I uh, I like to throw in a handful of snails. I like Malaysian trumpet snails; they're my favorites. Put a handful of them, and then feed lightly for a month or two. And you have a tank ready to raise shrimp in. So I've always used them to get tanks ready for shrimp. And when you first start a new shrimp tank, you don't have tons and tons of shrimp. You might only have 10 or maybe even less than that in there. Waiting for them to breed out and populate. And it's pretty hard to just throw enough food in there. In fact, if you only have like 7 shrimp in like a 10 gallon tank, you're not even going to feed enough and make enough ammonia to keep a cycle going so that's where shrimp come into play shrimp snails I wonder how many times I've said shrimp and meant to say snails in this video here's a good streak of them right there gathering up again I'll go ahead and show you how I do that on camera real quick in this tank before we get to the skittles tank this I threw all them algae wafers oh. <laughs> Gotta be careful not to hurt the little shrimpies uh, that's part of the fun of getting these guys out is not getting the shrimp out I got this is like a lid I had to a breeder box and it's working well like, all right shrimpies get out of here watch out big guys and the baby plecos we don't want you guys either and then I usually use a ladder on this tank. I stick my mitts in here. And you know, less substrate you grab the better, but it's not the end of the world if I grab some out. There we go. Okay, so this is the method I've been using to get rid of these snails. Round them up. First, you gotta do is bait them out. Hikari algae wafers have been working very wonderfully for me. So, 
I'm doing now is trying to push this moss back so we can get some more of these shells. So, you're just going to act this as a scraper. We're going to make a huge mess here. This tank is going to be cloudy. Look at all the shrimp scattered. Ew, they're touching me. It feels really weird. That's really awesome. Oh my gosh. Look at the colors. Look at the rainbow colors right here. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Look at, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Alright, get some of this. We got some algae and crap right here. We can scoosh out of the way. A little chunk of wood out of here. I'm probably going to fill up two or three of these specimen containers on this tank. This is wild. Trying to be very careful not to hurt any shrimp. I'm sure I probably am, but not on purpose. So I adjust this. This tank is on the floor. So get working on it and filming on it at the same time. It's quite a trick. So watch out little shrimpy buddies and we got all the way back here in this corner see if I can get this get these pieces of wood I don't want to scoop up I didn't intend on this looking so awesome with all the shrimp getting Scooped up and freaked out. That looks pretty sweet. There we go. Now mind you, this is there's still gonna be tons of snails in here. And I like snails. But actually, I'd say like 95 well not 95, I'd say three fourths of this tank is dead shells. For when I'm scooping out the last of the shrimp in these tanks. Alright. <laughs> Look at that big old pile of snails and snail shells we got gathered up. Yeah, that's when I get my foot out of here as much as possible. But anyway, I feel like some kind of hard water thing that was stuck to the heater, and all you do is handfuls, and hopefully I'm not getting that many shrimp. Which I'm sure I'm not. I can't guarantee you. Well, I'm sure I'm probably getting a couple. But I'm trying. To, yeah, these are almost all empties. But there's plenty that are still alive. So that's the process here. You can't if you don't have shrimp or a bunch of little critters that are hard to get at or afraid you don't want to get in the net and catch on accident then you can always use a net but when I use a net I end up catching way too many shrimp and then they're a pain in the butt to get out of the net once you get them in the net so that's what we're trying to avoid here so I'll just do it with my paws Ooh, yuck. All right, I'm going to get this all scooped out of here the best I can, and we'll see where we're at. 
Okay, so here we are, de-snailed, at least in the front portion of the tank. <laughs> it's an all stirred up mess, but and I'm wore out. There it is. <laughs> and just in that tank. The last bit of that, there's a lot of substrate there because you're trying to scoop up the last bits of it. Yeah, and I see some snails on the carpet. No worries. I have a dog that likes to eat them. <laughs> so, that one. All the way full of that one. Lots full. So, when you do this, it's one of them things where... You keep coming back and doing it again and doing it again and doing it again like right here right now I just got done doing this tank a couple hours ago and we've got more so I'm gonna after I get done making this video I'm gonna get some more of these snails and we'll just keep coming back next weekend I'll do it again and this is gonna have to be become a part of regular maintenance because when you get too many of these, they outcompete the shrimp for food, and we don't want that. Look at that, is so gross. Ew. Oh my gosh. So, a necessary evil is what I guess my final verdict is on snails. They're definitely useful, but when you have really hard water like I do, the snails are really like it, it seems. So, back to getting more snails out. Hope this video ends up making sense. So, thank you guys for watching, and remember, snails are good. You need them for a balanced ecosystem, I feel, in most scenarios. But they can certainly, certainly get out of hand. And the best way to do that is to, I've heard people using lettuce, you can use fresh vegetables, you can use anything that they like to eat. I find, I, I find, I have found that my Hakari algae wafers <laughs> they love Hakari algae wafers so that's what I use I put them all like on this one I put a pile of them in one corner and in about three or four hours you come back and you'll have a lot of snails gathered in one area so I'm going to keep doing this every week on most of my tanks until I'm happy. Now this Bloody Mary tank, this one is a huge improvement. I haven't seen black substrate in here, uh, just white Malaysian trumpet snail shells. That's all I've seen in this tank for a long time. And the shrimp look a lot better on the black substrate than they do on snail shells so that's pretty awesome got my blue jellies all or blue jellies blue dreams all stirred up got a lot of them out of here of course I've been working this tank already got hit two or three weeks ago so I got a good deal of these guys out of here I'm thinking these trumpet snails are slowing my shrimp breeding down so that's what's prompted me to do this and had a couple of people ask me about snails lately and I've made a snail video I think sometime in years past but here's an updated snail video a necessary evil good friend and foe at the same time how do you like that thank you guys for watching bye